The Vulcan Deckmasters Week 2, Day 2, with me, Frodan, casting. We're just done uh, casting the match between Bunny Muffins and Steelo. A fairly quick series, it seems, with the uh, Agro Paladin, who recovered from the brink of demise. Very, very close match there. Yeah, and it could have easily gone to the Tempo Mage, even though he did end up winning with a pretty significant health advantage. It's The, the point is that the game was at the tipping point. And there was a very easy way for Bunny Muffins to just lose there. But he did take the series, a very much needed win. Because again, the top three advance from the group uh, after the week stages are over. So uh, make, go ahead and check out all that stuff over there at deckmaster.vulcan.com. If you guys are confused on um, you know, how the format is, because it is best with three conquests. People aren't used to that. It's more of like a qualifier for right. them. Uh, but we, it's because we put a lot of games out for these players to make sure that they're getting as many games as they can. Um, as opposed to like playing like, well, there's there's two series, and if you lose one of them, you know maybe you don't even qualify type of things. So. Yeah, the group stage really allows you to may maybe make these best of threes uh, a bit more acceptable, you know, for a card game format. Mm. Anyway, so the next match we're going to be casting is going to be Surrender versus Ivan. Surrender, we spoke of him, South Korean player, one of the best, if not the best, in his region according to some of the stats out there, and uh, Ivan Floch. I think that's how he pronounced his name, a Slovakian mm -hmm. player, a Slovak. I'm not exactly sure how he's supposed to say that. Um, Magic the Gathering players making their foray into Hearthstone after Brian Kibler and uh, what's his name, Paulo, if I recall, trying yeah. his way, his hand is Hearthstone. Yeah, Stan Sifka has also done really well recently. In fact, winning tournaments and placing, you know, very respectable in DreamHacks. And, you know, these Magic guys are coming in with a lot of experience but not just in, in terms of playing the cards but also just composure and how to prepare for tournaments mindsets uh, those th type of things especially since Hearthstone is such a cerebral game are very important to have under your belt but Ivan's down 0-1 in his overall scores right now and we do know Surrender is 3-0 so can he continue his streak here looks like he's the only one left training it is pretty late in uh, the Asia right now I believe it's what like 1-2 a.m. maybe <clears throat> maybe even 3 a.m. so uh, square <laughs> I was going to say Squarespace. Surrender is uh, the one here <laughs> who's going to have to try to keep his eyes open, but he looks like he's sharp at the moment. All right. So Ivan here playing a mid-range hunter, a hybrid with Lepernome. I have to guess it's going to be more of a hybrid deck versus Surrender's Rogue. Likely to be Tinker's Sharp Sword. Not really much. Uh, I mean, there's no other decks in the moment. We've seen some other attempts from people in making other things work, but not very convincing. Yeah. Um, you're absolutely right. There's been other types of rogues experimented with. Uh, I, I look at you know Super JJ and Nyria trying to make dragon rogue work, or we see like control rogues try to try to pop up. Um, but generally speaking, oil rogue has the key, which is being able to burst while being able to grab major tempo. Yeah, um, and, and it's it's a lot like the way tempo mage functions, where you just try to break the rules and bend stuff with mana costs. Yeah, I really do like. That's what one of the things I like most uh, archetype wise is playing the uh, the aggro control. It's basically the type of deck that it represents. Very known archetype in Magic, not so much in Hearthstone because of the game mechanics. All right, so the board is. I mean, that Blood Mage Thanos just in the night of Lepernome is you know pretty much mandatory. But what's interesting is. It indicates that Surrender might believe this is more than a hybrid, possibly an aggro hunter. Yeah, this could have easily gotten punished if mm -hmm. he didn't have Fan of Knives and a Glaive Zooka came out, because then he has to take double damage. But because it ends up going for it, ooh, Ivan ends up going for a trade here. And so that indicates, again, that uh, he doesn't really trust his opponent on having Fan of Knives. He's like, well, why would you... Why would you make that play if you thought I was going to have Glaive Zuka? You have to have another way to easy remove it for three mana, and it is fan. So if I end up like pushing there, I could have easily gotten punished. A very good read. Well, do you give the backstab for a combo enabler is probably what he's wondering at this point. <clears throat> I don't think there's using an eviscerate here is going to be any sensible. Yeah, well, you wanted to keep it for like to the fan of nice play where you just keep your dagger to finish off the juggler at a later turn. Mm -hmm. it takes you know, six it's, really, from it. it's actually very important to keep that at this rate, especially if Animal Companion comes out and he needs to find a way to to deal with like Misha pretty easily. Um, not to mention that he's got the turn five play with fan of knives and sap or fan of knives eviscerate or that kind of stuff. Uh, now he picks up the Azure Drake, so he even has more plays. And if he picks up Preparation, then he can start really commanding the board here. 
Yeah, this is the strength of Rogue. The moment they have, like, this is a pretty good hand for a surrender, but without the prep, it's still not going to give him the tempo advantage. You have to play prep with any piece of removal or a sap, and very often that's what gives you the, the edge on the board. Because at that point, Rogue doesn't lose it. Rogue rarely loses the board once they've got it established. It's just getting there. They just mm -hmm. don't have the tools yet to race to it. Yeah. Now, do you even acknowledge the shredder here? It's it's always scary for Rogue to leverage their board because it's a target for Sharp Sword Oil if they want to race. It's also an opportunity for them to really push damage, and a shredder is really sticky. If you play the Eagle Horn Bow, you also go off curve, so the Haunted Creeper sort of gets strand. Like it gets awkward next turn too, because if you want to play Haunted Creeper next turn, then you're floating a mana as well, and you want to kill command. I think I, I mean, I think the Haunted Creeper is pretty solid uh, because you can then hero power on the back end and weave in more damage. The problem is, again, is the same weakness you're afraid of by acknowledging the Shredder. Is next turn you have to deal with it. You're gonna, you're gonna at least be able to weave in a hero power uh, with Kill Command or the Bow, depending on what you want. But it's always a risk. Like now, he can actually handle those one ones if he wants to. It's just what is he gonna do about the Shredder? Well. He can clear if he wants to play a defensive game. Azure Drake is also a more aggressive stance on the board, which I don't mind at all because your opponent will have to acknowledge it. And Surrender never respecting the Doomsayers. <gasps> oh, oh, what a crazy outcome for <coughs> Ivan here picking up probably the best two drop he could ever have hoped for. Yeah, I think the only thing slightly better might you can even consider things like scavenging hyena because so you do have the hundred. Is this why you trade left. first? Is this why you trade your shredders first? I mean, this is a perfect example. Surrender has not yet in this tournament so far traded the shredder before he played a card ever, and every single time I ask myself that could really bite him in the butt. But it's just that's exactly what it did here. That whirling zapomatic coming out. <laughs> I mean, there, there were a handful of two drops that could have been really bad, but that's certainly one of the worst, considering how much damage it takes. And, and Rogue really tries to... It, like, it's going to take damage from Hunter because the, the hero power naturally lends itself to, to take damage on things, and Hunter wants to put on a lot of pressure. I think but he... The whole, yeah. Go ahead, sorry. No, I'm saying the whole point is that normally you have time to race, but not with a two drop doing six damage per turn, and it looks like it won't really stop... Uh, unless you're trying to give up your whole turn. He does have the Antique Heal bot though, so maybe that can help him continue to race, but he needs to pick up something more. His hand's looking pretty weak. Yeah, does Ivan want to just push face? Like, that's the question you've got to ask yourself here, because he can trade if he wants to. He can also just play around with the, the bow as a removal piece for that 1-3. All right, he's going to play it a bit slower, knowing that... Uh, how reasonable would a uh, Kill Command face play here have been? Um, well... It would have put him down to about, you know, my, less than 10 health for sure. That's a really interesting question. So if you kill Command Face and attacked, how much damage would he have had extra? You would have put him at 9? Yeah. The Creeper would have still been alive, so it wouldn't have been popped either. Uh, if you guess, assume uh, the worst case scenario, you'd have 8 damage. I, I wouldn't hate it, to be honest. But then you also leave Spell Power onto the board. Uh... I guess you could go a halfway play. There's actually a lot of options there. That's why Ivan took his time. Um, so I think, you know, there's a lot of merit to what you were talking about now. Surrender somewhat unhappy with the decision here of having to do it, but at least he's got the heal bot to make up for the fact that he spawned a little 3-2 yep. with Wind Fury there. Very 13 important. 13 damage. That pilot shredder did 13 damage and killed off his opponent's shredder body. It was absolutely insane. Th that kind yeah. of value. Yeah, that was. It's one of those things where the shredder is not often. People point to the shredder as a good example of RNG done well, where the the variance is you know not really that meaningful. But the times where it is, it's incredible. Like a control warrior mm. spawning a dune mole shaman on his opponent's side, not able to handle it. <laughs> you know that is the dune type of RNG shaman. with a powdered sky golem. It's crazy. Like it it comes out yeah. of that, and you've got no answer. So do you play Huffer or? Do you play yeah, the high it's main? it's dangerous to play high main if your because opponent has sap, but your opponent has to have sap plus something else. Because right now sap is just a sap pass. It's like, oh, hey, I'm, you can replay your high main next turn, and yeah. surrender ceiling looking for answers. There are none. I'm sorry. Okay, so he's got eight damage in hand. Blade flurry can enhance double of whatever he picks up. So if he picks up oil, then That'd be 16 damage. He's still so far away from killing the hunter, though. He needed something on board. 
flow of three mana is so painful. Ivan might be considering weaving in the hero power with the animal companion now, since he's going to be off cure with high main, and then high main on eight would allow him to get that extra bit of damage to uh, to push for lethal as soon as possible. Yeah, but it's actually it's still statistically unlikely that he has second sap, and he also has a lot of like he obviously has spells that he, right. he didn't play any minions, and he didn't also use it correct. So maybe he has oil or anything, but statistically speaking, it's unlikely he has. The second sab. <laughs> and now surrender thinking, hey, I've got to sab this, but... Uh, Calculating think, his damage, it seems. Yeah, I think sapping here is the losing play, unfortunately, because you don't do anything again. Sap doesn't actually right. gain you anything other than stalling. If you yeah, sprint, position, it you might get options to do stuff. And interestingly enough, Ivan's one damage off lethal. If, if this ends up sprinting and just passing... He has 18 damage next turn. You forget about quick shot. Hmm. Oh, you're correct. He could hypothetically kill him. But just like you don't play around the second sap. Of course you don't play around. You don't play around the second kill command <laughs> yeah. with the quick shot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, there's like there are ways to play to lose. Um, uh, low sub, backstab. All right. Well, these are okay hands, hands yeah. yeah. So if he if he picked up any of those minions when he sapped the first time, this game actually is over. Actually, does he just push face for full damage? Like, what what do you care, right? Yeah, I mean, you, <laughs> why not? What do you he care? Really what used, do you care? He, at best, he'd probably have another farseer. No one's playing two heal bots. No one's that crazy. People like winning, so you can go ahead and double kill command here. Yeah, what are the also, odds of a second heal bot of that in that rogue deck? It's true. You can also. Uh, Mix it up by animal companion, kill command, and hero power. It still accomplishes the same thing. You keep a beast in your hand. Um, the only thing you don't play around is Lotheb. If your opponent somehow clears board and then drops Lotheb. Hmm. Yeah, I don't mind that at all. And if it's me, if it's uh, if it's Huffer, you're still going to be able to kill him next turn. Well, it's like slight little plays that mm -hmm. overall don't tend to make a huge difference here. I mean, this yeah, is kind of like, how do I want to win, basically? Mm -hmm. The rogue won't play around the second kill command because they can't afford to. It has to yeah. just play as if the, the first one does, has been played and he's used it already. So Ivan is not a player who wants to go for the throat as soon as he has to, as soon as, soon as he can. Oh, man. Actually, this is a huge opportunity to, um, swing, to back. swing the game. Lotheb, Sap, Eviscerate. And you you clear the board, and you keep a target for oil to come down, and you have a prep and blade. He's got three. the prep and the blade three, and the yeah. This is actually the turn the surrender might have been waiting for. Ivan probably should have been more aggressive with those skill commands. Could that come to turn the game around? That will turn the game around if uh, if surrender picks up another form of like weapon damage. If he gets the second oil, or if he gets a deadly poison. Because then that's 20 damage. Right? And load them with, yeah. ev Eviscerate. So. Oh, he'll be actually one damage off. Can Unless you squeeze in the Drake next turn? Hmm. 5, 6, 10. 12. No, he no, can't. No, I don't think he can to do it with the Drake, no. He's going to go face and leave that. He's going to leave no. the up. Just, you would prep he does, the uh, the the if he if he eviscerates the face. Yeah, he has to kill Leoc, otherwise. Okay. Well, that's that's still tight South though. South Sea deck. Oh, well, never mind. No, no. I mean, oh. the kill command still can't kill him, but it's really tight because now he kill commands the minion, <laughs> and he loses his oil target. Unless Ivan decides that he doesn't want to kill Lotheb and then surrender gets the initiative again. But there's no way Ivan's going to make that mistake. He knows how old Rogue plays. I mean, he has to. You can't let a 5 attack target and 21 health with a full hand. I mean, there's no chance. Well, when you, when you eviscerate the face, it's very clear your opponent's trying to push for lethal. Right. He also held four cards when he had the sap on the high main on turn 6. So he has a lot of cards where maybe he can burst him. I'd be very surprised if he either didn't play Freezing Trap and like Hero Powered, or he just kill commanded right here. Both are appropriate, I think. South Sea Deckhand. 
the play. That, that would be beyond the play. That'd be the dream and uh, the fantasy. Unfortunately, I don't even yeah. know if Surrender plays anything else that could have saved him here. 12, 20. Deadly 20. Tinkers. Oh, man. He, is, he would be so close. If there's any way so many Azure options. Drake into... Well, he can replay Lotheb. Does that save him? If he replays Lotheb, he, he eviscerates the Leoc. That brings him back to the same point, and he's actually not even dead. Nice. Yeah, actually, that's that's the play. Yeah, and then you should deadly poison. Unless you want to set up a Tinkers okay, now yeah, with Tinkers uh, now, it's fine. This raid. Same, same thing, essentially. Yeah, late three now. Mm -hmm. And now Ivan at least is going to be able to kill that, uh, that Lotheb. But is Surrender going to be able to take the game on the back of this with Deadly Poison, Eviscerate, Blade Flurry? That's going to be two off lethal. But with the Drake, he's going to be one man. He's going to be a few man off without being able to rearmor up. Well, oh, now he's got to silence Lotheb and kill her. And kill I guess. command it. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, you you could be threat of dying. I'm I'm really surprised by the slowness of Ivan's line of play. Really, over the past uh, the past few turns, when he committed not to kill command phase, that was a pretty I, uh, that was a really this, slow play. This game ended up being surprisingly tense. Like there's a lot of decisions that ended up being the case where they were denying their opponents. But they haven't been able to press for the kill. Because remember, we talked about some plays where maybe he could have set up to be super aggressive, but because he held these kill commands for so long, I mean, he's given surrenders opportunities to potentially win. Okay, well, kill command to eliminate the Lotheb. There's surrender. Probably wondering what? what why did he not kill command my face yet? <laughs> right. I would be I would be surprised if that's what's racing through his mind now. So dagger, deadly, this raid blade flurry, and he's actually going to live through the turn if he does that because there's no second kill command now in Ivan's hand. Can you squeeze in a minion while doing this play if he uses this the second blade flurry? I've if he doesn't blade flurry and just keeps the backstab to kill the owl, sure. Uh, he doesn't have to blade for yeah. yet. Just uh, daggers up, deadlies. I mean, pilot of shredder or Drake. Pick your choice. Mm -hmm. I'd probably you keep play the, the Drake, Drake for the next turn, though, because you still can play the Drake now, though. Because what if you pay, have Farseer? Then you put, go up to nine, and then you backstab. If you don't have Farseer, you still have SI seven agent to potentially push on the board. These are all really likely things that can get squeezed in. Yeah, second deadly would also increase the value of the blade for. I mean, at this point, I think the in, the only dead draw in Surrender's deck is a second sprint. Oh, wow. Well, Ooh, the caster curse. Noxious, how could you, Bo? Well, it's not even neat. that bad. Oh, wait, does he have it anyway? Uh, no, he's, he's gonna be he's like just shy. Short. But Ivan needs to pick up a quick shot of Bo. Yeah, um, he's one, one of his hybrid off. chargers, I guess. There's, a, there's maybe a Wolfrider in there, maybe a quick shot, a second Bo. Lotheb. Uh uh. That's not what he's looking for. Actually, oh high main goodness. kill command doesn't even kill. It's like it's like yeah. everything is so close. He's one damage off. If he Lothebs, he dies. You have to kill command your own shredder and hero power. Well, I think he well he might have to kill command the the Drake. That's the realistic possibility. He plays yeah. the the high main. Yeah, high main kill and then kill command the Drake. Yeah. And you also can play the Leper Gnome with that for 10 mana. Now you're at 5 and your opponent has a 3 damage dagger, which means any SI7 agent or anything like that will kill him. But this yeah, is what it's come down to. And with Sprint, honestly, I think it's more likely than not that he picks up at least one SI. And Surrender probably very happy about this. He's like, yeah. you know what? I can probably take this game Sprint. if only Sprint does what it has to. Sprint just has to pick up... An SI7 agent, and there's he had five chances this turn. Yeah. One on the draw. <laughs> He's, he does have a farce here, by the And way. there it is. All right. He picks up the SI and seals the game. Yeah. I have yes. to admit, I didn't think Surrender would take this one because I pinned Ivan on being a bit more aggressive with his kill command, but he kept them as removal pieces.
Yeah, he played it like Control Hunter, where right. he was very concerned about Rogue's Burst, which, you know, rightfully so. We've all had our fair share of way too much damage being dealt by the Rogue. But at the same time, it's like you mentioned uh, multiple times over, the fact is you force Rogue into a really uncomfortable position by being aggressive, and then all of a sudden... Uh, you're able to continue. You, you're like on a draw to win versus like right. he was in a situation where he was trying not to die repeatedly, <laughs> turn yeah, after turn. It's like w when you're forced to play to win, um, you're making plays that just set you back a little bit, right? When you're going all in, sometimes it'll pay off. Uh, when you're playing defensively from the start, like putting him on one health on that one turn where, you know, it could have mattered. Um, when you've always hit a heal bot, I think would have been a sensible play. But Ivan... Gonna lose this one. Let's see if he plays this one differently uh, with his own hunter versus surrenders hunter. Uh, two mid ranges, it would seem. Maybe surrenders a bit more mid range. Uh, Ivan playing hybrid. Whenever I watch this matchup, uh, I admit it's not my favorite, ma most favorite matchup in Hearthstone. But whenever I talk to players like RDU, he thinks that this is one of the most strategically deep matchups in the entire game, and he's, I... he's convinced of it. I agree. Like I'm gonna you agree, agree with you. Oh, I will. Okay. I will agree with. Uh, like I will agree with one thing. Mid range hunter versus mid range hunter is really strategic. Hybrid hunter versus mid range hunter is really strategic. But face hunter versus face hunter is not. Like the moment you put face hunter in a mirror match, the complexity goes down a lot. Like, if you pin it against another hunter type, then sure. But double face hunter is pretty odd. All right, and there is. A rather aggressive start for Ivan, but uh, Surrender has almost a dream curve here. He's got yeah. a knife juggler and uh, a lot of early drops here. So if he's able to roll like Misha, which oftentimes is the best card that you can get off Animal Companion in this mirror, unless you're trying to push for a lethal, um, he's going to be able to protect this knife juggler and control the state of the board, which is so huge because... What, what everyone wanted to do in this matchup, even dating back to a year and a half ago, was to have something on the board. People would play like Timberwolf turn one. Back yeah, in the just day. to get something down. Yeah, I remember <laughs> yeah, exactly. that. I was just like, I can get a one drop. All right, good to go. What, what would he save this coin for? His coin animal companion next turn would be really powerful. I think, I think the hesitation is if he has Glaivezuka, then he kills my web spinner. Then I have to knife juggler, coin, web spinner, hope for 50 50 on the. Leper, and that's really awkward. Mm, I uh, see, I see. There's like it's true. a few the hesitations, board, but the board control though is so powerful. And if you, and even if he clears, you get two chances to draw regular beast means like river yeah, Compass yeah. And I I would have coined it out here. I think maybe yeah. I'm in the minority, but I mean this this is uh, this is again what we're talking about, where there is a lot of diversity of choices if there's early game options, and almost all of them have potential game ending ramifications you know if like if he makes the wrong choice he could just straight up lose because he loses tempo board and damage now ivan's in a really awkward spot it's like you don't yeah. want to silence or spend the silence on something like this you'd rather go on mad scientist or the inevitable high main but you you value the board so much that you feel like this iron beak owl would be if you don't play it you lose too much tempo and that knife juggler just got its value increased from a 50-50 to 66. Although, now that this Haunted Keeper comes out, huh. another play opens up, right? Yeah. Uh, that's, the, that's definitely the safe play. The 66% is good enough very often, but when it whiffs, oh god. Just, there, there's really... The it's upside of that play is even not even that high, though, because if you play a knife juggler, he can just eagle horn bow down the knife juggler. So mm -hmm. I think overall, more times out of not, this Haunted Creeper is, more, and especially because it gets more effective now than later. Like, if you play Haunted Creeper and Hero Power and he plays, like, you know, low thread, it's like, well, Bottle, <laughs> yeah, Bottle yeah. Shredder, whatever it is. Like, you play it off curve later, it's going to be a lot worse. Plus, you set it up before the juggler is played, so you can get the true. knives, uh, more, more knives. Always it's all better. true. I don't disagree. All right, well, I think so the game you. is telling you to go face. <laughs> I was going to say, I get, I'm getting a vibe here that the game really wants Ivan to push face. Yeah. Although he's doing his best not to do so, based on the last game, I don't think that's a play style he likes very much. Yeah, even the, even the world's worst palm reader can tell you what this hand's meant to do. It's, you're, you're trying to just push damage. You even have quick shot to refill. And most likely, your opponent can't deal with it. Uh, you don't really necessarily keep Unleash the Hounds early on. You try to go for board threats, not board responses. So that's the only thing you're really concerned about. 
I would really be surprised if he traded and just hero powered here, but I think you just go ahead and hit damage. And well, crush. Ivan's Ivan's made some really uh, unorthodox plays in the last game with his hunter, so maybe his play style is different. I just don't know how you're supposed to catch up from a hand like this to turn it into a tempo game. Um, yeah. I don't think it's likely that you're going to be able to do that. Now on the flip side, um, oh. if Ivan didn't hate spiders before, he certainly will hate them now because they're going to definitely control. There's a very strong likelihood. It's three chances to juggle onto one of the minions here with one health. Well, that's done. Okay, well. So Unleash the Hounds being the best dog they hear for Ivan, probably. Well, then again, well. Yeah, it's essentially Unleash the Hounds, the board cleared. That's a terrible draw. You have to Might quick just shot quick shot. Uh, at this point, don't you want to keep quick shot for the, the cycle effect? Oh, yeah, I'd love to. But yeah. you have to hope for kill command. For <laughs> that requires a next turn. Yeah, you're right. You're right. There's, yeah. <laughs> there's a there's a bit there's a big of a setup there. Before you quick shot, you have to <laughs> put Hunter's mark on the neck joker for one one damage. Like, that's the kind of stuff you have to do. Unless you want to play that wisp with charge. I'd love to, but you know you don't. In this case, wisp would be a better draw than the Hunter's mark. Mm -hmm. So I guess you just quick shot on hero power, but then you lose three damage. If you optimize every point of damage, kill command's five plus the quick shot is three, so you have eight. So he wants to use it for the cycle. He's going to use a skill command on the knife jeweler. Wants to maximize the draw, and not the damage. I almost wonder if going full face here wouldn't have been like the the go to, right? Mm -hmm. um, he might have thought about that. So definitely, definitely in consideration in a position like this one. Again, unleash yep. the hounds. <laughs> you don't really necessarily need to coin <clears throat> something out here. You saw that your opponent plays high mains. So if you set up the freezing trap now, it doesn't really do much. Yeah. The coin hero power is just to optimize a little bit of damage. But if he draws high main, he can't play it next turn. Yeah, he's got a good bow freezing trap turn anyway. Oh, God. True, true. Still looking for the unleash the hounds. Yeah, no questions I mean, asked here. At least uh, now you, Hunter's Mark has a legitimate target. You could play Knife Juggler, um, Abusive Sergeant, hu like Hunter's Mark on Misha, and then play mm. Abusive and Quick Shot. Mm. I, I don't know about that, man. It seems like if you go for that, then your hand's just completely Dead, empty. Yeah, there's no you know, that's top docking. He has a board, he's going to trade, and then you're just stuck. Yeah. I say you Abusive Sergeant the Misha to like show where the Knife Juggle has to hit. No. Yeah, he should have done that. that. See, it went. It wanted to go face. Now you saw, yeah, by yeah. buffing it, it thought it was gonna go face, but it wasn't. Oh, a substantial draw here, at least. Oh boy, that's also a really nice draw too. Now, first, let's see what this um, web spinner gets. Maybe even something better, like King of Beasts. Ooh, Shrink Shrink Lord Lord Tiger. Tiger is awesome. <laughs> oh, this is just an insane card for him to find here. Is that better than Lothab? I'd um, say so. You, you can always enable a Houndmaster afterwards. It's true. And do you care about him playing spells? I guess you're worried about quick shot number two, but how well, much, really? Now you can save Lothab for a more opportune time to drop him if you're trying to... Like, say you're, you're getting low, right? You're at 19. You get to, like, 12, yeah. scared. Play Lothab. Yeah, it's a good way to lock up a game, basically. Oh, well... Lothar now denies things like Animal Companion. But your opponent also has shown very weak turns. Like, he just dumped his entire hand and just drew off Quick Shot. Oof. Oh. Well, you know, Freezing Trap is going to handle this magnificently. That was a snap play by Ivan, realizing, well, that's pretty much my optimal play. Unfortunately for him, unless he plays Kazan Mystic or Flare. That's or correct, picks man. This up the trap. Unleash. You know, an unleash could also force the freezing to do little to nothing. Which is highly amusing because, once again, the best way to deal with Hunter often requires you to play Hunter. You know, you use the Unleash the Hounds to pop Yeah, the the, that trap. is my biggest gripe with the class, actually. It was Flare. worse when Flare was won, right? It was even worse right, right. a long time ago. Oh, my turn to pick up Lothab. Okay. Um, now, does that help? Mm. I want to say yes, but I don't think so. 
I mean, at first glance, it's definitely not the worst draw you could have gotten. If you got Web Spinner, you would be crying. But what Lothep doesn't allow you to do is develop the bow. You have to hero power. And you might realistically need this bow to start doing six damage now. So if you do six damage plus the, the well, four there's a from the hero up. power. You're right, you're right. That's even worse for him. Because like there's eight damage on Surrender's board. From Ivan's perspective, right. He's unless he runs any kind of fancy healing tech. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, we know that Ivan's dead because there's the bow, plus the quick shot, plus hero power. But if we're in Ivan's shoes, he has to count that he has ten damage from Eaglehorn bow plus two hero powers. Yeah. And he has the high main itself. Ah, uh, that he that's... was afraid. Of the fear of every hunter player getting a high main return to the hand to cost two more. Yeah. It's like worse than a sap. Because you're the one doing it to yourself, right? It's like self-inflicted pain there. But on the plus side, high main's finally balanced. Eight mana. Probably appropriate. <laughs> well, from here you can't necessarily kill him. So I mean, you still have to make the trade. You could play it super safe here if you're a surrender, right? Like, there's no reason to... Yeah, exactly. You know what? High main's one of the cards. There's no way he could kill you if you just trade. In fact, there's no way he can kill there's you. There's no way he can kill phase. you anyway. Yeah, you can just go face. Never mind. Change of plans. I was going to say, the Strangle Thorn doesn't really change anything. I mean, that makes it really close. Yeah. Well Five, well eight, eleven, thirteen. And if he had the beast, it'd be fifteen. Yeah, but that's it. Been it. Like Surrender takes it 2 0 in the second match, and he's still undefeated here, Noxious. Yeah, 4 0. I mean, he basically won against every single player in his group, so that's going to make him move on to the playoffs. Um, there's no way anybody can get a better score at this point since they've all lost to him. Um, for first appearance in a tournament that I've seen, at least, I think uh, Surrender is doing amazing. I mean, this is just incredible. 4 0. There's life coach in his group with Show and Cypher. I mean, Cypher maybe doesn't get necessarily the best tournament results, but he's a solid player overall. Um, not exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Really surprised by this outcome, but Surrender, I mean, congratulations to you. Guaranteed to move on top of the group. Uh, he still has to go through the rest. I mean, it's not over. The playoffs are not even there. He's still going to have to power through everybody else who's at the top of the playoffs, which is a feat in and of itself. Uh, we're going to be casting, after the short break, uh, another match in this uh, in this event. We're going to have Gara versus Hawkeye. Now, Gara hasn't uh, hasn't really gotten an amazing performance recently, but is a really creative deck player. As I've said before, and this is probably one of the, my favorite things about him, is he's really awesome at coming up with twists on existing archetypes. Oh, yeah. He's got his own take on a lot of stuff. Um, the team disagrees with him half the time, at least on Tempo Storm. Uh, but that's part of his unique style that he brings. And Hawkeye, too. Hawkeye went undefeated in Swiss rounds. For Dreamhack playing mid range shaman, and he was the With, only player undefeated after uh, seven rounds. So, yeah, I mean, bringing a shaman to Dreamhack, and you know, that's just really brave. Yeah, that's really, really, exactly really brave. really brave in the metagame riddled with uh, what we've got at the moment. So, we'll be back after a short break, guys. Don't go anywhere, we're gonna keep going.